uh, the next one, which is data entry shortcuts or shortcuts in general. So let's start with dating shortcuts. And um, dating shortcuts is how, how to quickly enter dates inside uh, QuickBooks Online. Let me go ahead and create an invoice here. And, um, and most people at this point, at least power users, know this. But the ones that don't know this get completely mind blown when they uh, learn this from uh, for, for the first time. So when you we'll go put a date, right? QuickBooks actually accepts multiple date formats. So if I wanted to put July 1st, I can do multiple ways. I can do 07 slash 01 slash 2020. Hit tab, QuickBooks will accept that. Most people go that route and it takes forever. If you put 07, no slashes, 01, no slashes and two zero and then hit tab, QuickBooks will accept that. So know that if you are a slash typer and a four year typer, I just saved you four characters for every single time you enter a date. Four characters, maybe half a second times, how many times you enter a date that would save, save you some serious efficiency time. The other really cool thing about QuickBooks is um, QuickBooks will accept the year or auto enter the year of the current year. So if I wanted to put, let's say March 1st of 2020, and we're currently in 2020, literally all I have to do is type 0301, hit tab, and then QuickBooks will understand that I'm entering the date for this year. So that will save you even the current year. So that's a really important thing. The other really important thing about dates is that you can actually hit uh, letters on your keyboard to go uh, to do a shortcut. So for example, if I want that invoice date to jump to today's date, all I have to do is put my cursor on top of it, press T on the keyboard, T, letter T, like the word today, and it will jump and do today's date. So I'm recording this on June 25th by pressing T, it jumps straight to June 25th. If I press minus on my keyboard, it will go down one date, minus, 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 It'll go down one date. I hit plus, 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 plus. It goes down another date, right? So we got plus and minus, goes up and down one. And uh, T for today, uh, it's it's for uh, today's date. Now, if you want to do yesterday, uh, take a guess what yesterday is. Now, I know most of you thought that it would be Y. <laughs> so it's, it's, that's not how it works. So if you want to do yesterday, you do T and then minus. So co you combine it. T minus, that will give you yesterday. If you press Y, it goes to the beginning of the year. Think of the word year. If you press R, like the last letter of the word year, it goes to the end of the year and it works uh, and it can toggle. So if I wanted to go back three years, I press Y, 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 right? If I wanna go back, let's say, I wanna go back, let's say to December 31st, 2017. So how I would do that, I would, I would press Y, 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 and then minus okay or y y y y and then r okay so y and r extremely important t for today important plus and minus are uh, very important you can also do month so for example i mean i'm today which is june if I, if I press m like the word month it goes to the beginning of the month press m again beginning of the previous month if i press h it goes to the end of the month like the last letter of the word month press h again end of the month and so forth so as simple as this is, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Whoever came up with this, I don't know when ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago, was absolutely brilliant. And I, I find myself using those dating shortcuts uh, all the time. There's also W and K for, uh, for week, but honestly, I never really use uh, week, like last week and that sort of thing. I just never find myself uh, using those, uh, those specific tools. So those are the dating shortcuts, which to me are... Uh, really, really important. The other thing you want to talk, we want to talk about is the inline calculator. So QuickBooks has this quasi Excel feel. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So if you're typing anything on a quantity rate on amount field, so it's, it needs to be a numerical field, you can actually type a formula. It can do plus, minus, division, and multiplication. So for example, if I wanted to quickly do the amount of uh, let's say half of half of 520. So I would do 520. So 520 divided by, I put the slash, and then I put two. 
And so I basically typed it in like a formula. I don't need to do equals like the way it works in, in, uh, in Excel. Just type 520 divided by two, hit tab, and it will do the calculation for me. And what's also really cool is uh, it respects uh, uh, the sequence of, of, um, of, uh, of operators. So for example, if I do two plus four, which is six, right? Divided by six, I'm gonna hit tab. And actually what I meant to say is it follows the numer the 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 pe I think it's called PEMDAS. I forget exactly what it's called. So if I do two plus four divided by six, what this is going to do is do four divided by six and then add two on it, right? Uh, what I've never experimented is with parentheses. I don't think parentheses work, but I'll I'll try it. Just hit tab. So this should render a one. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's cool. That's a, a fascinating. On that, so it does. It does. Um, it does respect parentheses. Honestly, I've never tried parentheses because I don't get fancy with this uh, formula. So it res it respects the it respects the PEMDAS, uh, which is the order of operators, and it also respects parentheses. But there's no need for you to put uh, equals. If you put equals two plus two and then hit tab, it doesn't understand what equals means. So it's not going to work the way Excel is. Now, once you do a formula, um, let's do, let's do four plus two, times two plus seven, and I hit tab, once it resolves and it gives me a 15, I cannot click back on it and see a formula. So from that perspective, it's not the same or very diff different than Excel. It's not gonna save a formula. This is not Excel. So it's not meant to do formulas, just for quick calculations to get you, uh, to get, you know, just quick solutions for, you know, just trying to get a number done real quick. Okay, let's talk about something simple like shift tab and tab, right? So let me zoom out a little bit here. So again, this is more of a uh, sort of a standard QuickBooks, uh, sorry, a standard Windows functionality or computer functionality. If I don't want to use a lot of the mouse and I just basically want to uh, type something here, I can literally just start typing, hit the down arrow and select the customer. So notice I'm not using the mouse, right? I'm free of the mouse here. Okay, so I'm just hitting down arrow and then hitting tab. So you're going to put the information you want to put, okay? hit tab okay so once you hit tab it will cycle through all the windows anytime you are in a um in a field sorry anytime that you're in a field that has a potential checkbox like for example field later which is a little bit grayed out or grayed in letting me know that that's the field i'm in by pressing the space key the space key activates uh those uh those checkboxes so the sh the tab allows me to move sort of forward field to field and then shift tab allows me to move uh, backwards. So forward and backwards. If I'm in the list of product and services, for example, I can also click on the down arrow and the down arrow will open up that, um, that drop down menu. So all the drop down menus like terms, classes, locations, items, uh, or products, accounts, customers, vendors, anything that has a drop down menu, you can just click on the uh, on down arrow and it will open up that window and then you can just I hit up arrow and down arrow to cycle through them. Once you pick the one that you want, I recommend you don't hit enter, although enter works, but just kind of don't get used to hitting enter. Tab is a just much better uh, friend uh, to uh, to just general QuickBooks um, you know, usage, right? So, so it really depends on the program that you're using, but tab I think is the best thing uh, to use. So that's tab, shift tab, and up and down arrows. Now let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. So when I have QuickBooks Online open, I can hit Control Alt or Control Option if you're on a Mac. Control Alt question mark or Control Option question mark, and it will give you two key pieces of information. One, it will give you the company ID, which might be variable. Uh, actually, which which is variable, it's different per customer, but it might be valuable for like technical support. You're calling technical support. They quickly want to find your account. Maybe you got multiple accounts under the same email. People like to use their emails. Company IDs is a much faster, a much faster way of getting to uh, to to uh, basically for backend support of which is the company file that they need to be working on. But every anything you see in here, all the letters you see here, I W E X R, these are the keyboard shortcut combinations. If you hit Control Alt on a PC or Control Option on a Mac and click on and hit any of those letters it opens up uh, that specific uh, function. So for example, 
control alt a gets me to the chart of account so if i wanted to quickly go to the chart of accounts from here i hit control alt a or control option a and uh, i have to be outside of a of a trend of a live transaction so control alt a or control option a takes me straight to the chart of accounts if i hit control alt x it takes me straight to an expense transaction okay if i hit control alt i it takes me straight to an invoice transaction however any live transactions like this one, anything that has the X button on the top right, and you could easily tell because it has the X button, that one needs to be closed first because that's sort of a layer on top of everything else before you can jump to another a keyboard shortcut transaction. So if I wanted to X out of this, I can drag my mouse over to the X, right? That's an option. <laughs> or I can hit just hit escape on my keyboard and close that. So that escape key, by the way, it's key. It's really, really useful. So I want to go to an invoice, control alt i that opens up an invoice. So let's try that. Control alt i opens up the invoice. X to close it. Control alt r it takes me into receive payment. Press X to close it. Control alt b okay, that one doesn't do anything. <laughs> let's see what control alt b oh, that's not a thing. Okay, so for uh bills, there's no shortcut. That's interesting. So there's no shortcuts for bills. So if I wanted to build a shortcut for a bill, control alt b doesn't work. Oh, that's, that's curious. If a control alt B doesn't work, then what you do is you go to bill, and then of course you take that, click and drag that into your shortcuts menu. And because you don't have a keyboard shortcut, then the bill, the only way to get to the bill is to actually click on the shortcut in the top. So not everything uh, has a shortcut, unfortunately. It would be nice that you could do uh, a shortcut for every single thing. But if you want to just know what it's available for shortcuts, then you hit that control alt question mark which will give you basically uh, the cheat sheet in the slides you notice that there's a little chart there that I, I did for you I basically just copy and pasted uh, that from uh, from there so you can see it so my favorite of course is gonna be control alt F so let's go to control alt F so I'm gonna do control alt F my favorite it opens up the search screen in the in, which is the magnifying glass which allows me to do a quick search or look at my latest transactions and if i click on advanced search all the way in the bottom if i click on advanced search let me zoom this out here so if i click on advanced search right here click on that it takes me into the search screen which is something that i use very very often and i definitely want to click and drag that search into the shortcuts because i do want to quickly access search because there isn't a keyboard shortcut for it so just like a bill that's something that if i access a lot i definitely want to have a quick uh shortcut for it so those are the shortcuts uh that we have uh for for uh quickbooks now the other thing is data entry shortcuts so the register mode it's something that a lot of people don't use with uh online banking with bank feeds there's really for most people there's no need to use bank register and enter things straight into the bank register but i do find myself doing quite a bit of um transactions in the register itself so i'm going to click here where it says go to bank register so it's going to be on the top right of my any of my uh, banking menu or i can go into my uh, chart of accounts and click on chart of accounts and then i can look at let's say my credit card where's my credit card here my amex i can click on view register and that will take me to the register now i can click and drag this shortcut to the to the bookmarks menu so i can go straight into the register but one thing as, as somebody as, uh, asked earlier you know would this register link work for every client or every quickbooks file it wouldn't because this one is using account id 29 which is how in this specific quickbooks file this credit card file is identified is identified as 29. So if you don't have an account 29 and you try to do this in a different uh, QuickBooks Online file, it will probably give you an error. But what you can do is you can right click on that register uh, bookmark and you can click on edit. And it's alluding a little bit to what I was speaking about earlier about uh, editing those bookmarks. And I can come in here and simply just delete the question mark and the account ID, delete that and just leave the uh, forward slash app and the forward slash register uh, in the bookmark, click on save. And what this will do is if I click on that register, it would take me to the generic register. And then I would have to pick up here, which bank account I want to get to. So 
which is also a really good thing to do. So if you do that, then you quickly want to, let's say, for example, you happen to be uh, in the reconcile screen. Let's just say we happen to be reconciling real quick. This is a classic example in which, you know, I'm in the middle of reconciling the bank and I'm missing a transaction. What is the quickest way to enter something straight into the register? Well, I have the register button here. All I have to do is right click and go to a new window or click here where it says bank register, right? Uh, in this case, I don't think I can right click. No, I can't. So I go to the bank register, but by having it up here in the top, I don't have to close out my reconciliation. So by having it at the top, I can right click there and click on new window or new tab. And then I can have my register mode here and my reconcile screen without having to get out of it. So if I'm in the register mode and I want to enter a couple of transactions, most people think this screen is a little bit uh, cookie and clunky, like it's difficult to work with. If I want to create a new transaction, I have to click on this drop down. I have to pick the transaction type, expense, and then I have to click on all these tabs. And it just doesn't look uh, data entry friendly. So, the way to make this screen really quick data entry friendly that would feel a little bit more like an Excel spreadsheet or maybe QuickBooks desktop, if you're a QuickBooks desktop user, you click on the gear menu on the top right and you're going to do these two show one line and paper ledger. Those are the two options you want to check. So one line first and then paper ledger. Okay, my two favorite. I also like to do compact. Okay, and I like to have the least amount of rows in the register again, because most of the times when I'm in the register, I'm not really looking at a bunch of transactions. I'm mostly just entering new ones. So by doing this, it just makes, makes it feel a lot more data friendly. I can also collapse the left navigation bar and then I can play with my zoom in and zoom out settings until I am at the most possible comfort, comfortable spot. And then from here, I can create new transactions really quickly. I can just start with my date, right? Let's say I want to go back. So to put everything in practice, I want to go back to dates. So minus, minus, hit tab, put my check number, whatever it happens to be, tab, go to payee. So let's say this is uh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I, I, I pay Chick-fil-A with checks. And then we put the category, right? I can click on the drop down menu and pick a different category if I want to, or I can just type whatever it happens to be, select that, hit tab, and then this is uh, owners, pay and personal expenses, hit tab, put dollar amount 45, let's say 45.16, tab, tab, and then now that I save is selected, press enter, and boom, create a transaction super quick. It prompts me straight to the next transaction and I can just keep on typing without having to do all that random and awkward clicking. So all of a sudden your check register is now a really sexy place to go add information, right? Because I know for the longest time, people just got tired of using the check register because especially in QuickBooks Online, because it felt uh, so clunky, all right?